Yabba dabba doo! It's the Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. Ha! Ah, wait till you hear what I have to tell you today. Fred Flintstone. Everybody knows and loves Fred Flintstone. In my comedy career, there are many newspaper reviews that says, I have the face of Fred Flintstone. Or I look or act like Fred Flintstone. And let me tell you something. I admire any man who can stop a car with his feet. However, today I have one of my unique stories about the Flintstones that not many people know. Only through inside Hollywood gossip and sources can I reveal to you a little known fact about the Flintstones and Tennessee Williams. Now, the famous author Tennessee Williams, some say a tortured homosexual alcoholic. Maybe there's some truth to that. He wrote wonderful plays, A Streetcar Named Desire, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Summer in Smoke, Small Craft Warnings, which is a good play. People should reread that or put it back on the stage. Anyway, here's the story. Tennessee was deeply depressed, uh, very depressed, and he needed something to lift his soul because he had written a play which became a movie that was immensely popular suddenly last summer. It starred Elizabeth Taylor, Montgomery Clift, and Katherine Hepburn. It contained insanity, lobotomy, lobotomies, homosexuality, and cannibalism, incest. Some people thought he was pushing the envelope. Being from Kentucky, I instantly related to all this material. Anyway, he was very depressed because there was pouring a lot of personal stuff into the script and things he knew about other people. He had a friend that worked. I'm not going to mention the cartoon company. I'm not going to mention any of the names that will give away what's happening. But they said, why don't you help us all with the scripts for the Flintstone? This is going to be a prime time cartoon about cavemen. It's just what Tennessee needed, the tonic. However, being Tennessee Williams, he started working in a lot of the themes that he liked. For example, you may notice that Fred and Barney have a homoerotic relationship. Do you notice they're together all the time? Sometimes Barney will say something and Fred will just, <laughs> Barn, calls him Barn. You may also notice that um, Betty and Wilma have a homoerotic relationship. They're both in pairs, but they pair off all the time. Also, the sexual innuendos about their children. Bam Bam, the son of Betty and Barney. Bam Bam, BB, Bam Bam. Listen, when a man is young and he gets a hard on, he takes his cock and he goes, bam, bam. Every young man knows that. Older men know when you really get older and it gets hard, you bam, bam, bam. So if the series had progressed into its fifth and sixth season, they were going to have him older doing bam, bam, bam. Also, Pebbles, and this is true, I'm not making this up. That is the name for a young girl's sprouting breast. It's a very common name down south where... Tennessee came from. So Pebbles is innuendo. Bam Bam is innuendo. Barney and Fred innuendo. Betty and Wilma innuendo. Ladies and gentlemen, the town of Bedrock, do I need to paint you a picture? Now, I watched the series as a little boy and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it when Fred would go to shave and he would take a little shell thing and shave and he would put that shelf back up on the medicine cabinet and the camera would come in and go, it's not much, but it's a living. That's genius as far as I'm concerned. But it was only later that I realized all the Tennessee Williams inferences, carrying those clubs, Mr. Slate. Mm. However, where's the real tip off about where Tennessee Williams influence came in on the Flintstones? Aha! It's in the song. Where the Flintstones meet the Flintstones, where the modern Stone Age family. It's at the end of the song. And we'll have a gay old time. You only have to examine all this. And you realize that I've given you Hollywood insider information from impeachable sources. Unimpeachable sources, I'm sorry. Hey, listen, Big Daddy knows. Subscribe. You'll learn more about Hollywood than you ever imagined.